surely sound. All the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the sky. Go and we're going where no one dies. Head and we're bound. Church, say amen. Church, say amen again. It's good to be back to complete our day of worship to the Lord who is so worthy of our praise. Is that all right? Let's uh, not belabor. Let's go ahead and get into it. Let's go first uh, in a word of prayer to our Father. Gracious Father, we thank you once again for the privilege that you have afforded us to worship you in spirit and in truth. And Father, we just are so honored uh, for the privilege that we all have, Lord, to be called your children. Father, we pray as we continue to uh, study this lesson about your plan for the preacher and his work, we pray that you would help us to have understanding so that we as a congregation of your people can know what you have prescribed for your men who would be preachers and that the men who desire the work of an evangelist and preacher would understand, Heavenly Father, that this is the most serious work a man can ever endeavor to do. Amen. Father, bless us, be with us, and we again thank you for the heart of our brother Willie, Heavenly Father, for having taken on this task of serving your people in the office of an evangelist. And we neglect not to play, pray also for his wife, Sister Phyllis, and we thank you for her, and we thank you for her diligence, and we pray a blessing upon their family. In Christ's name we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen. This morning we went over the first three of the five P's of God's plan for the preacher and his work. First P being, of course, preaching the word. Amen. Amen. We found out in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 2 and we uh, to emphasize that the minister, the preacher, the evangelist is to preach the word, we emphasize what the word preacher actually means. And we looked at that word corrux or herald, and that the herald is one who is not under uh, his own orders, but he is a man under orders. Is that right? And he's not his own master. He is the one who was given the authority to go and give the uh, message of the king and he had no authority to adjust that message to change that message he had to give the message as the king gave it and likewise the preacher has to give God's message as God gave it is that all right because only the word not our ideas and not our two cents can save souls the Bible says receive with meekness the engrafted word which is what able to save your souls is that all right Number two, the second P was pointing, pointing. The preacher has to be one who is pointing uh, people to Christ by a consistent example and pattern of his own life. We said that you cannot divorce the preacher from his preaching. And unfortunately, a lot of congregations are in a lot of mess. Amen. Because they say, I got a good preacher. He can preach the word, but he can't live it to save his life. Is that all right? That, that has to go hand in hand. We can't divorce it. And we saw that, amen, in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 12 that was read, that you have to, the minister, Paul told Timothy, you be an example of the believers in word and faith and charity and all those things. You be the example. We know that Paul, Timothy was a young man. He was a little bit timid. But Paul had to say, listen, if you don't want people to despise you, then you live it. Is that all right? As we said earlier, it's hard to despise someone who's living what they're teaching. Is that all right? Is that all right, parents? It's hard for your children to despise you when you're living what you're teaching them. Is that all right? Number three, third P was preparing. The minister has to be a man who's preparing other men as scriptural leaders. Amen. And I know I mentioned Marquise today, but I left somebody out. Amen, Brother LaCroix. And other men, too. But I love Brother LaCroix because he's doing an awesome job in the faith builders class. An awesome job. And I thank God for him. Yes, he would say I'm on drugs for 
thanking him and being appreciated to him. Me and Lecrae have come a long way. Y'all just don't know. That's my, that's my man. But he has to prepare me, and he also has to prepare all the members of the congregation to become better and more faithful saints, more faithful servants, and overall lovers of God. We saw that in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 2 when he says, And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, anthropos, men and women, because men and women in the church have a responsibility to teach. Amen, Sister Ruth. Sister Ruth teaches by her example. Is that all right? And not only is Shaquille thankful for it, but I'm thankful for it. I was blessed between services to have a conversation with Sister Ruth. And I just love my conversations with Sister Ruth. Because when I'm talking with her, we always reminisce about Brother Eugene. And for those of you who knew Brother Eugene, he was an outstanding man. Outstanding. So we're thankful to God uh, for uh, them and this uh, for men who prepare uh, God's people. But this evening, we're going to get to our final uh, two points, and I won't belabor. We'll get straight into it. Uh, the fourth uh, thing that a minister, that God uh, requires for those uh, who will uh, be his ministers, that's part of his plan. The fourth thing that a minister has to do, uh, uh, a man of God has to do, is he has to be preventing. You say preventing, that, don't, that doesn't sound uh, too encouraging. Well, it's encouraging to prevent when you are preventing things that would mess up the truth of God's word. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I want to share with you while you're turning there. Never get so high or become, uh, take it for granted for what you and I have. Say, what are you talking about? Not everyone is blessed to be able to have sound teaching. Not everyone is blessed to have individuals whose sole goal is just to please God and not themselves. And that's why, you know, some of you may have gotten a little bit, uh, you know, out of the way of what I said earlier when I first started this morning when I said I thank God for you because some people say, well, you ain't, you ain't leaving, are you? You know, are you saying that because you know I'm not saying it because I'm leaving. I'm staying here. Amen. I love you and I know you love me. Is that all right? I know you love me, and I know you don't want me, want me to work another day at Beacon Health. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just thought I'd drop that in. Now. Amen. <laughs> but it's, 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 it's noteworthy when individuals are all on the same, of the same mind and the same judgment, and all we want to do is please God. Amen. That's a beautiful thing. And that ain't the same case everywhere. So we need to be thankful to God. Amen. Amen. We thank God for one another, but we need to be thankful for him for working in our lives. Is that all right? So he has to be preventing. Look what it says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 in the verse 19. He says, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having what? This seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. Is that all right? Say what? The Lord knoweth them that are his. There's a lot of congregations playing Church of Christ, but God knows who are his. Is that all right? There's a lot of congregations that's got the sign out there, Church of Christ, but God still knows who are his. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We went over this yesterday in our Revelation class. And how sometimes you can even have a congregation where the leaders are not what they're supposed to be. And they're dead. They're not motivating the people. They don't give a, a, a I don't, I'm just going to be quiet right there. They don't care nothing. Y'all almost messed up, y'all. Woo! They don't care nothing about the people. And Jesus talked about that. He said they're hirelings. Is that all right? They're hirelings. But understand, 
Y'all done knocked me off my... Listen. God knows who are his. So even at a congregation where the men aren't what they're supposed to be, if I'm not what I'm supposed to be, you still follow God. Is that all right? Now let me make this plain. If I'm not following God in the works, you still follow God. Now if I'm not following God in the teaching, in the doctrine, then you follow God somewhere else. Y'all ain't hear what I said. Is that all right? Because if I'm practicing something that causes you to practice something wrong, then you wrong too. You get that on your way home. Well, that's the truth. He says, and let everyone, here's the key. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, I, I looked up this word, Brother Willie. And this word means it refers to wickedness and unrighteousness. And it's particularly wickedness and unrighteousness that's seen in the, in the neglect of the truth of God's word and his laws. Are y'all following that? It's neglect of God and his laws. In other words, this iniquity are, are the people who hold the truth in, in unrighteousness. Are y'all getting that? Now watch this. And they impede the worship of God by their adherence to worldly views and idolatry. You say, you said a lot. Well, let me just say it plain, plain and simple. There's nothing, no good things from the world that we can bring in here to improve God's worship. Are y'all getting that? God's people, if you want some history on that, just look at God's people in the Old Testament. Israel always got into trouble because they always wanted to be like the world. And many times in the church, sometimes we want to do what Creflo Dollar is doing. We can't do what Creflo is doing because Creflo is not following the truth. He said, but Creflo got a lot of people. Yeah, he got a lot of people, but that's a lot of people in vain, isn't it? We have to stay in the truth. And the man of God has to be preventing false doctrines and ideas to creep into the church. And I know sometimes y'all look at us brothers as, man, they, they kind of hard and strict. We got to be. You don't bring no nonsense up in here. Is that all right? Y'all say, Mark, you a kind man. I'm kind until you bring some falseness up in here. Don't take my kindness for weakness. Is that all right? But we have to stick with what, listen, I don't care if it's, you think it's old and foggy. Guess what? It saved people back then. It's still saving now. Say, but the kids, we're going to lose the kids. We're going to lose the kids. Well, guess what? If they don't want to stick to the truth, they'll be lost too. We sticking with the truth. They want us to send our kids down to the youth conference and, and do everything that God didn't tell them. Is that all right? got to be preventing. Amen. That's what a good minister does. He prevents. Because in 1 Timothy 4, Paul said to Timothy, amen, he told him, listen, if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ. Now, what do you mean if you put the brethren in remembrance of what? Well, what did he just talk about? He just talked about the fact that the spirit expressly speaks that some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So a preacher of God's word has to keep the congregation abreast of what's going on. So when we come to you and we say, listen, we know that this sister congregation is having a program or having this or having that, but we are letting you know we're not going to support that. Understand, we're not doing it for any reason other than it ain't sound with God's word. Now, you're still free to do whatever you want to, but we're going to tell you the truth. And not going to be ashamed about it either. Is that all right? 
Because guess what? If we just let you do or, or said anything to you and you go over there and get all messed up, then you say, why didn't you tell me? All right. Are we okay? You see, he has to prevent false doctrines, but he also has to prevent unruly sin in the church. He's got to be preventing not only false doctrine from keep creeping in, but he's also got to prevent unruly sin in the church. All y'all got to look down now, huh? Understand that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. And there is a such thing in the Bible called church discipline. And we can't allow, amen, unruly sin in the church without being disciplined. You say, well, I don't want you in my business. Then don't make it our business. Is that all right? The, the thing is this, it's not so much about coming to you and offending you. The thing is saving your soul and protecting others. When we cut up in a church, we don't recognize the effect we have on other people. And when we come to this, we have to be no nonsense. We've been in situations where we try to talk to a brother about a certain situation. And he walk out all mad and steamed and come right to you. And say, you know what them brothers tried to say to me? Right after we just talked to them. That cannot happen. Is that all right? Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? This is the book. We got to prevent that. Watch. He says in 2 Timothy 2.19. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and earth. And some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared. Did you get that? Prepared unto every good work. Ministers have, has to be preventing unruly sin and work to prepare people to be meet for the master's use. Because I'm here to tell you, when you caught up in practicing sin, you can't do nothing for God. Is that all right? Right, all right? Lastly, number five, we close with this. Not only does he have to preach the word, not only does he have to prevent, and not only does he have to point, but he also has to position people. He has to be positioning and equipping the saints in areas that will utilize their God-given gifts and talents for the glory of God. We just read 2 Timothy 2, verses 20 and 21. And now I want you to look with me in Titus chapter 3. Titus chapter 3 in verse number 1. Again, he has to be positioning people. Is that all right? Okay. Titus 3, 1 says, put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, and to be ready to every good work. Is that what your Bible says? To be ready unto, to be ready to every good work. Now, you can't be ready unless you first be, have been positioned to be ready. You first have to, in order to do a good work, you have to be equipped to do a good work. We can't go out and help our family and friends come to a knowledge of the truth if we're not equipped with the truth. If we haven't been positioned to know, amen, the plan of salvation for ourselves. And not only that, but just to know how to converse with people to bring them to a knowledge of the truth. We have to be able to position them. Is that all right? Now watch this. All of us, all of us, amen, all of us have at least one thing God has given us to be able to glorify him with. Do you believe that? You say, well, I can't, 
do it like Brother Floyd. Well, God didn't intend for you to do it like Floyd. He made Floyd to do what Floyd does. And he made you to do what you do. But one of the worst things that can happen is for us as members of the body of Christ is to sit and do nothing. Sit and act like God didn't give you anything to glorify his name. And I'm not talking about, well, I don't know my purpose. You already know your purpose. Your purpose is to glorify God, to serve and worship him. That's your purpose. Is that all right? Now, how you go about doing that in your own unique way in the body as a member of the body. Amen. You have to be diligent to put your hand to the plow and doing everything to find out what you're good at. But you'll never do it if you don't put yourself out there to do that. Is that all right? We're in great need of teachers for our youth. All right. And I made it a point to go back today and go in every class back there. And I'm thankful to God for those teachers who are participating back there. That is a wonderful work. Amen. It's not easy to deal with them children. <laughs> you know, when they get around their friends, they want to be all loud. and Yeah, be all loud. But it's hard to deal with that. But you just can't have some people that care about what's going to happen to them and some people who don't. You say, well, they ain't my kids. Well, guess what? You're a member of the body. They are your kids. They are your children. We're responsible for one another. Is that all right? We have to be willing. All God is looking for is for a willing mind. Amen. If you're willing, then God will do the rest. Say, well, what do you mean? Well, don't bury your talent. Don't become timid and fearful of using what God gave you to glorify him. Now, let me share something with you. Second uh, Timothy. Actually, I'm going to go back. No, Second Timothy chapter 1, I'm sorry. Starting with verse 5. And again, we're talking about positioning. And let me say this, even when you position someone, you have to still reinforce them. You have to still encourage them. Amen. All right. You have to still support them. Because it's ongoing. Right. Are y'all getting what I'm saying? Verse five says, when I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, Paul talking to Timothy, which dwell first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, I am persuaded that in thee also. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us what? The spirit of fear, but of what? Power and of love and of a sound mind. Is that all right? He's having to encourage a minister to do his work. Stop being timid, Timothy. Stop being fearful because God didn't make you like that. And I'm here to tell you, Church of Christ at the Boulevard, stop being timid. Stop being fearful of using of what God gave you. God has made a great investment in you. And he expects a return on his investment. You don't get points just for being around Christian people. People who are busy about God's business. You don't get points just for being around. You have to give an account of yourself to God. Now the question is, if God said, ready or not, here I come. Right now. 
Are you willing and are you ready to give an account right now? Or do you need more time? That's the thing. Time is not promised to any of us. Praise God that he gave you today. But don't be unwise and think because he gave you today that he's going to give you tomorrow. The day in, you, in which you hear his voice, heart not your heart. Now, we always apply that to people who are hearing the gospel and things like that. But guess what? It's still the Christians, too. When God speaks to you on something that you know you, you're in need of doing, don't harden your heart. Amen. Don't act like he's not talking to you. Amen. One thing that's sobering about preaching God's word is it always hits you first. Always hits you first. So when we get here Sunday morning, we all beat up. All coming in here with a complex because we're not worthy to even preach this to you. But yet we have confidence because God is using us anyway to speak for him. And if God can use me, he definitely is able to use you too. Is that all right? So don't aspire just to work for God when you got it all together. Newsflash, you never will have it all together. So go ahead and work for him because he can use you too. Is that all right? I've said enough. Five Ps of God's plan for a preacher. And I just pray to God that we can continue to work towards just staying faithful to God because we talked in the brothers today in our devotion. We asked ourselves, what is it going to look like 10 to 15 years from now? You say, ain't you going to be around 10 to 15? We ain't guaranteed to be around. Y'all, I get tired now after I preach. It ain't like it used to be. I used to be up there, get up there for days. Amen. Y'all remember them two-hour sermons. It ain't like that no more. But we got to start making a way for young men like this right here. Make a way so that when he gets of age, he can be going to those uh, camps and things like that to teach him at that young age to be a preacher. We need to be set aside scholarships for young men like this so that they can go to the Memphis School of Preaching. That's sound. You said, why you ain't mention another one? I said the Memphis School of Preaching because they sound. That all right? I long to see the day where I can just sit in the back and watch Shane up there preaching. That would be beautiful, wouldn't it? Not only Shane, but Jameer. Y'all don't, y'all need to stop back in the third classroom back there. Stop back there and hide behind something and, and watch Jameer. Watch that young man. And all of them, Adam, all them young men, they, they are dynamite. They're awesome. Quoting the books of the Bible and everything. He was playing with his little truck. And he's like, Exodus, Exodus, Leviticus. That's multitasking right there. You know what I'm saying? I got to sit and think a while. Ago. I brought him. He's going to be outstanding. Consider where you are. We don't have too many tonight present. Oh, let me just say that because you never know. Extend the greatest invitation ever known to man to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Having heard the word, are you willing to repent if you believe? You know, we skip over belief a lot. But you know, there's a lot of people that don't believe this. You ever noticed? They say they believe in God, but once you get to, okay, let's study and let's see what the Bible says. Well, okay, I can't see what you're saying, but, you know, I just believe. Thought you said you believe in God. This is his word. Then are you willing to repent? 
change. Confess Jesus Christ as the Son of God and be buried in baptism for the remission of your sins. And God himself will add you to his church. For those of us who have obeyed the gospel, we have some contemplation to do. Because there's no way that we can say we are God's people and not be about his business. Is that all right? Y'all going to make sure that me and Willie are about this business, right? You sure is. Guess what? We're going to make sure you're about your business, too. Because guess what? We got to an answer for it. You ain't got to an answer for us, but we got to an answer for you. Amen. You bring your belt? No. <laughs> I'm just teasing. But we love you. Yes. We appreciate you so much. And as I always say, there's no place I'd rather be. All right. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Consider.